Hi, welcome to Stress-Free Cooking. I'm Barbara Selig Brown and this is Tom Beyer. Hi. We love to cook together and today we're going to make homemade ricotta and a homemade pasta from the homemade ricotta called malfatti. Malfatti means badly formed because they don't have to be a perfect shape. So it's a really light, delicious, fun pasta. We make this all the time together. Yes. So Tom's quite good at it. So um, I think maybe Tom is gonna be taking over the pasta making. Okay. Right, but we also need a sauce. So we thought we'd roast some tomatoes with garlic, extra virgin olive oil, and salt and pepper. We need to get those into the oven first. So here's our tomatoes, Tom. Okay, let's um, add Let's crush those cloves of garlic, okay? So we're, Tom's gonna take a chef's knife and just crush the garlic with the side of the chef's knife. And then we'll chop it up a little bit once they're all peeled. And I'm gonna sprinkle some extra virgin olive oil on here. Just a little bit, just enough to make them brown and keep them nice and moist. A pinch or two of salt and pepper. I'll give these a toss. And then when that garlic's ready, Tom, you can throw it in here. Okay. So if you crush the garlic with the side of the chef's knife, usually the peel comes off quite easily. Of course, larger cloves, it's a lot easier. And we'll just give them a rough chop because they're gonna brown while they're in the oven. When garlic is raw, it has a very hot sort of fiery taste to it. The more you cook it, the more it mellows. So if you saute it, it gets a little mellower. If you roast it or bake it in the oven, it's gonna become the most mellow that it can be. Okay, so the tomatoes look like they're ready for garlic. Just want this in. Yeah, just pop that in there and I'll toss it around. Great, thank you. Tell me when we're all set. There's one more little scoop. Okay. And I'm gonna put these into a 425 degree oven and let them roast maybe 10, 15 minutes until they're really soft and they'll start to brown a little bit. And then when we toss them with the pasta, the juice will come out, they'll break up a little bit and it'll be a great fresh tomato sauce. So let's put these in the oven. And the next thing we need to do is to start the ricotta. So for that, we need the milk that's over there. So let's grab all the ingredients, Tom. So we have a half gallon of whole milk. So once we have the milk in this pan, we're gonna heat this to 200 degrees. We have a candy thermometer in here and it will it attaches to the side of the pan and I'll just keep my eye on it. When it reaches 200 degrees, we add about a third of a cup of vinegar. You want something that's acidic. You could use lemon juice as well. So let's give this a few minutes. So you can see that our thermometer reads 200 degrees and this is the time when I add my white vinegar. This is distilled white vinegar, about one third cup. And then we just let this sit for 10 to 20 minutes. The milk solids will separate and we'll have our ricotta cheese. Ricotta means recooked. So we are recooking the milk to get our cheese. So we'll let this sit. So that's your fresh ricotta. Cake Bread Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cake Bread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. 
Cake Bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast, you can visit the winery or watch for Cake Bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The Cake Breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families. So one of the ingredients that we need for our mafati pasta is some grated Parmigiano Reggiano. So Tom has a microplane grater zester here and he's gonna grate the Parmesan Reggiano by hand because you get a lot more flavor when you grate things at the time you're going to use them. So you wanna keep everything fresh. And oftentimes people ask me, is it okay to buy grated cheese? Is it okay to buy peeled or chopped garlic? It is okay, it, there's nothing wrong with it. If that's the only way you'll have time to cook, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But just remember that you get more flavor if you do it at the time you add it to the dish. So, um, we have time today to grate our own fresh Parmigiano Reggiano, and you wanna buy the best quality Parmigiano that you can afford. So whatever is in your budget, buy the best that you can. So we want about six ounces of cheese for this recipe of Malfatti. Looks like we have plenty there. And you know, your hands are your greatest kitchen tools. You just make sure they're clean and they really are the best kitchen tools you have. So that looks good, Tom. That's about right. Yep, okay, great. So you can go ahead and pour that into the food processor. And so this dough is made in the food processor. So we have six ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano. We have everything measured out. So we have some salt in a little bowl there, Tom. And that's about a teaspoon How much to a teaspoon? Mm -hmm. We're gonna put one egg at room temperature, which we already have uh, set out, and it's at room temperature. And where do we crack our egg? On a flat surface. <laughs> Annabelle and Genevieve taught you well. We need about a cup of flour. And then we have extra flour here because when we roll the pasta dough out, we need flour on our work surface so that it doesn't stick. And then we have our two cups of homemade ricotta cheese, which is going to go in there. Okay. And we made that earlier in the day. All right, here, I'll take that. So, all of that goes into the food processor. We have the steel blade in here. And we're gonna just pulse it until it's well mixed. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's take a peek, see how it is. Actually, this could use just a hair more flour, if you could just flour. put a little bit of that flour in there. A little more. Flour, more flour. You want it to be a little bit sticky, but not really sticky where you can't. Perfect. Okay, that looks great. So, we are ready to start rolling this out. And I'll take this, we're gonna clean up, we're gonna get ready to roll out the pasta, get the rest of the equipment that we need. Tom, you can start, start rolling. rolling out, okay. So we're gonna put some flour, flour on, on the surface. work surface here.
So once you finish rolling out your malfatti, you take your bench scraper and you right. clean up your counter a little bit. And at this point, we're ready to get our water boiling and cook our malfatti. Now that our water is at a rolling boil, we can add about a tablespoon of salt and the pasta. So we can just pick up our parchment paper and just pour that pasta right in the boiling water. These only take about two or three minutes once they float to the top. So while we're waiting for those to cook, let's take a look at our tomatoes. Okay, these roasted tomatoes look great. They do look good. They're nice and soft. Yes. And there's a lot of juice that's come out of them, which will help to make a nice sauce for us. So we're gonna let them sit for just a second, but we're gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, okay? And we're gonna grab that basil, Tom, and let's add some chopped basil or torn basil to this while they're hot so that we get that really nice basil flavor throughout the whole dish. Good. Tearing basil is always your better choice because if you cut it with a knife too far in advance of using it, sometimes it blackens. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, great job. And I like big pieces. I like people to see the freshness in their food so people will know there's very fresh basil in there. And we may have talked about this before, but when you're using fresh versus dried herbs, the ratio is about one to three. One part dry equals three parts fresh. And our malfatti are coming to the pan surface. So we give them another two or three minutes while we're finishing up the sauce. We're also going to want to grate some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano on top of our pasta once it's ready. Now that our pasta is cooked, we'll drain this. And I have this great pan with holes in the lid, so I don't need a strainer. I just need to take my pan over to the sink. I'll drain this and then Tom, I'll bring it back to you to put in that bowl. Nice and easy. Here we go. So pasta. And then we're gonna spoon some of those tomatoes right onto our pasta. And we'll mix it around, a little extra grated Parmesan Reggiano. I love the colors. I think it's really pretty to cook with different colors. So we have some yellow tomatoes and some red tomatoes. Sometimes you'll see a package of baby heirloom tomatoes. There might even be a green one in there or a purpley one. So this was about four cups of tomatoes and it's probably just a little bit more than we need, but I like a lot of sauce, don't you? I do too, yeah. Especially when it's fresh tomatoes, fresh basil, fresh garlic, good olive oil. Why don't we toss that and then we'll put the rest of these right on top. Looks great. So again, any sauce you want on this, but it's summer, these tomatoes are right from our garden, so you can't go wrong. And we'll let this pasta sit for a minute so that it absorbs some of the tomato flavor and some of the olive oil. Perfect. Okay, let's get rid of this. And could you grate some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano on there? Take this. We're gonna keep it for serving. Good. So some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. Since the pasta is so hot and the tomatoes are so hot, that'll melt nicely. Yeah, it's, it's right melting in. instantly. <laughs> and I like it that way, because then you get more of the flavor throughout the dish, especially if you toss it again a little bit. Okay. 
And we can garnish with a fresh basil leaf. Okay, right in the center there. And that would be a great summer pasta dish. So let's talk a little bit about wine while that's cooling off. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have a K Vintners Barbera. This is a Washington State wine. It's from Casa Smith. I think it's their own little fun play on an Italian wine, but it's not a, a funny wine. It's just a very fun and delicious wine. So let's take a taste and tell me what you taste. So you're gonna swirl. Swirl. If you cover the wine glass when you swirl, you'll retain all those, all the very great fragrances and bouquet that's in there. And when you take your hand off, you'll really get the bouquet. And the first taste is for the nose. Oh, that's great. Very nice. Very dry. Earthy. Earthy, which is great for the dish we just created with those tomatoes and the basil and the garlic. Yeah. And it's also really deep red. The color is beautiful. It's very, yeah. And a great way to look at the color of wine is against something white so that you really see the color. So cheers, Tom. That's delicious. Crave Brothers is a family-run business producing award-winning mozzarella and many other farmstead cheeses. Their mozzarella and marinated mozzarella are fresh and light, and their mascarpone is velvety smooth. They also produce cheddar cheese curds, which are great for snacking. Their cheese is green energy produced and made from fresh, high quality milk from their own dairy farm. You can find their cheeses at www.cravecheese.com and many other national retailers. We're sure you'll enjoy these cheeses as much as we do. So let's take a taste of our pasta. I'll let you scoop it out. That's perfect. Here's a fork for you. Okay. You did a great job rolling out good. those malfatti. They're nice and light. You're an expert at that. I've had practice with this dish. Yeah. Yeah, we make it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think we have time to do one more dish. We're gonna do a really fun little angel hair pasta dish. So we're gonna clean up and we'll come back and do that. So we have time to do one more quick dish. We're going to do a sauteed angel hair pasta nest with a very basic marinara sauce. So Tom, I'm gonna to need you to do some more some garlic, garlic if okay. you don't mind. So again, you crush the garlic with the side of the chef's knife and the skin comes off more easily. So I think two cloves of garlic would be perfect for this. I like to do this dish with kids because they're not dealing with a pan of boiling water. So you can kind of control the safety of the cooking the pasta with this type of dish. So I'm gonna start by turning my pan on, adding a little extra virgin olive oil to the pan for the garlic. Okay, so when that's ready, Tom, you can just toss it right in this pan. We'll also want a pinch of salt and pepper in here. So we're making a really quick pan sauce, but we're eliminating that step of boiling the pasta as well, which I like. And the beauty of this is we're using these little pasta nests and they're gonna stay in this nest shape. So they'll grow a little bit, but they'll stay in the nest shape. And the other thing that I like about this dish is, if you wanted to, you could prepare this dish and then you could put maybe some grilled shrimp or a scallop or something right in the middle of the nest and it would add a little protein to the dish. So let's get the garlic cooking. I smell it already. I do too, yeah. You know, and that's a good gauge too. When you smell the garlic, because you don't wanna burn it, you don't want it to get black. If that happens, then the garlic will turn bitter. 
So we just wanna cook this for a minute or two until it's fragrant. And then we can add the pasta nests. So we're gonna brown those pasta nests right in this garlic, salt, and pepper oil. But this needs just another second, I think. Good job on that, looks great. We'll also add some fresh basil to finish this dish. Do you want broken up or chopped? Um, I like to tear it. Okay. I think it's a lot better if we tear it. Good. So the garlic is starting to get really fragrant now. And since I'm gonna to continue to cook this garlic in this extra virgin olive oil, I can begin to add my pasta nests. So we wanna make sure that they are in the olive oil. So I wanna make sure they're coated well. And you can put as many in your pan as will fit loosely because they're gonna grow a little bit. And one in the middle. Okay, and give this a minute or two so that the, the pasta nest browns. We turn it over. We add some crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes if you like, our basil, and we cook it about 10 minutes and that will be the dish. So let's give this a minute or so to brown. Let's check the pasta, see if it's nice and golden. Yep, that one is. Okay, so you can see you get a nice golden brown on one side and that will add to the eye appeal of this dish. Okay, so Tom, why don't you add some torn basil to this? I'm gonna add a splash of wine. We always add the wine first so that the alcohol cooks out of it. Wine is optional. Not for us. Not for us. <laughs> but if you were cooking with kids, you might not want to put the wine in there. Okay. So we're going to add some crushed tomatoes. And if the pasta is not completely covered by the tomatoes, you can always add a little bit more wine or a little water or a few more tomatoes. But this was one 28 ounce can of tomatoes. Okay. We'll get this to a boil. Looks great. Good and I'm gonna add just, could I have just a little bit of water in there please? Thanks. So that's really all we have to do to this dish at this point. Now we just wait about 10 minutes for the pasta to become tender. So our pasta is nice and tender. So let's plate one of these pretty little nests. Thank you, Tom. So I like to serve one of these as an appetizer or two or three if it were a main course, right? And sometimes, as I said, I put shrimp in it or a scallop on the side. And we can put a little bit more basil on there. Okay. So a little more sauce on the plate. And then Tom, how about a little bit of grated Parmigiano Reggiano? Also, Grana Padano would be very nice on this dish. It could be a great appetizer. It could be a great entree, depending on how much of it you want to serve. So let me give you a spoon. I know it's really hot. It's gonna be hot. Maybe you just take a little taste off the side. Delicious. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Do you want to taste? No, I'm good. Okay. Excellent. I'm Barbara Selig Brown. This is Tom Beyer. Thank you so much for joining us today on Stress Free Cooking. You can find us on Instagram at Stress Free Cook, on Facebook, Stress Free Cooking with host Barbara Selig Brown. We also have a great website full of recipes, stressfreecooking.com. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you'll be with us next time.